In this video, I'm going to cover equilibrium calculations with the quadratic equation. So here's a problem from our sapling learning assignment. A mixture of 0.436 molar H2O, 0.386 molar Cl2O, and 0.682 molar HClO are enclosed in a vessel at 25 degrees C. Here is the equilibrium equation, and Kc equals 0 0.09 at 25 degrees C. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of each gas at 25 C. So we've got all the different gases here from the equation, and we're given initial concentrations of each gas, and we have to solve for equilibrium concentrations of each gas. So let's plug these numbers in to our ice table here. Put I C E Remember, you draw a line between your reactants and your products. All right, and now here we go. We've got oops. zero point four three six H two O. Point three eight six and point six eight two. All right, so here's my initial concentrations. So the idea is we have some reaction vessel, a flask or something and I put this much H2O, this much uh, dichlorooxide, and this much um, hypochloric acid all in a vessel together, this, these initial concentrations, and I let them react at 25 degrees C, and I come back and change, check on it sometime later and see what the, what the concentrations look like now, to what extent they've changed. So I have these initial concentrations. How do I know that I'm not at equilibrium already? Or how do I know if I put this, all of these reactants in the vessel at the same time, how do I know that it's going to go this way or if it's going to go this way? So in order to answer that question, sometimes when, we, when we're given these problems, we have, um, we're given initial amounts of reactant only. So in your ice table, your reactants are filled in and they have, you have numbers here, but your product would start off as zero because you're not given any initial product. And before the reaction begins, you can't form any product. So this would be zero. If there's ever a zero, if you either don't have any react, don't have any products, or you don't have any reactants, and those are zero. If your products or re your reactants are zero, then it's easy to determine which way the reaction goes. It goes toward the zero, because if I have zero product, it, I certainly can't go away from the product. I can't lose product if I have zero of it. So if I have zero product, the only way for the reaction to move is forward, so I can create some product. So those are easy situations. This one, not so much. I have a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Am I at equilibrium? Maybe. I don't know. How do I figure it out? Well, remember, um, the first thing to do is to answer that question, do I go right or left, or am I already at equilibrium? I have to calculate Q, the reaction quotient. And remember, the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant expression have the same mathematical form, except when I'm calculating Q, I'm putting in the initial concentrations. I don't know if I'm at equilibrium yet. And when I'm calculating K, I'm always using equilibrium concentrations. Those are the only differences. So I put products raised to their stoichiometric coefficient over reactants. H2O, make sure when you're working with H2O that it's a gas, because if it's a liquid or a solid, then H2O does not appear in your equilibrium expression or in your Q expression. So H2O only appears in this expression if it's a gas. Solids and liquids don't appear. All right, so let's calculate Q. The concentration of my hypochlorous acid is 682 molar squared 
and H2O is 0.436 time point Three eight six. Two point seven six four. Here's Q. Here's K. Q is greater than K. So when Q is greater than K, then that means uh, my reactants are too, or excuse me, my products are too heavy. So remember that products, Q equals products over reactants, K equals products over reactants. So when that number is large, what that means is that the numerator is large. So my products, the concentration of my products is large, and the concentration of my reactants is small. When Q is a small number, or if K, Q or K is a small number, a small number has a small numerator and a large denominator, right? So when, when those numbers are small, Q or K, then that's because I have a small amount of product and a large amount of reactant. So here what this means, Q is larger than K. So if this number, 2.7, is bigger than this number, that's because the numerator is too big. If the numerator is too big, that means that I have too many products. So to reach equilibrium, this reaction has to move this way. It's going to move toward the reactants. So whenever Q is greater than K, the reaction moves toward the reactants. So I just thought of something here. Instead of comparing Q and K, what if we compared K Oops. And Q. So look look at this. If we compare K and Q this way and we put K on the left and Q on the right, then if Q is larger, then it looks like the arrow points this way. Right? And that's true, because when Q is larger, when Q is larger than K, then I'm gonna go to the left. I'm gonna go to the reactant side. But if K is larger than Q, or conversely Q is smaller than K, right, is another way to read this, then in that case my arrow would go this way and I would move from reactants towards products. So that's a good trick here. Um, I had never thought of that before, but that's a good way to look at this. Instead of comparing the size of Q to K, instead compare the size of K to Q and put K on the left side. And then whatever size, whatever this inequality shows here, that's the direction that your arrow goes. So if Q is larger than K, then your reaction goes to the left. But if Q is smaller than K, then your reaction goes to the right. It's a good trick, I've got to remember that. All right, so we know that our reaction is going to go to the left because Q is greater than K. So that means that I'm going to lose product minus something, minus something that's a function of the stoichiometric ratio here, so minus two something. And here I'm gonna gain these reactants, so plus something plus x and plus x and in this case um, it's a one to one ratio so it's just one x and one x all right so I, I write my equilibrium concentrations 0.436 plus x 0.386 plus x 0.6 minus 2x. So notice that I dropped the molar. Um, the equilibrium expression constant, k and q, these are always unitless. So in this case, this, the units actually happen to work out. Molar squared would be molar times molar divided by molar times molar. The units would cancel out and my q would have no units. But the stoichiometry doesn't always work that way. 
that could be a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, in which case you'd have molar over molar times molar, and the units would be something weird like 1 divided by molar. But the units, Q never has units and K never has units. And um, even if the stoichiometry here doesn't work out to, to have the same, so that the units seem to cancel. And the um, reason is because whenever we're looking at the, um, the concentration of a solution, when we're talking about equilibrium, we're always comparing that to a solution um, that has a concentration of one. And wh what we're talking about there is we call that the activity of the solution. And so unit uh, ex equilibrium expression constants are always unitless because we're always saying, for example, that we'd have 0.436 molar divided by 1 molar. Oops, 1.0 molar. This is really the activity, oops, A, activity of H2O. The activity of H2O is the concentration divided by 1 molar so that molar and molar cancel out and I get 0 0.436. So it's just the number that's important in the equilibrium expression. The units are not important. It's just the number that's associated with that concentration. All right, so let's build our equilibrium expression. That's going to be easy. All I have to do is this. Right, K and Q are the same. Now I have to change these values though because these values are different. And remember now I've got, uh, oops, 0 0.682 minus 2x is the equilibrium concentration right here. But this equilibrium concentration is squared. So I can't forget this square and I have to square this expression. All right, then the equilibrium concentration of water is this, 0.436 plus something. And the equilibrium concentration of dichlorooxide is this, 0.386 plus something. All right, so here is our, uh, we've plugged in equilibrium uh, concentrations into our equilibrium expression we're left with something like this. So in, at this step, we want to look for um, any way that we can simplify this equation so that we can avoid trying to solve a quadratic. Because quadratics take a long time. And whenever you're doing a lot of algebra by hand, you increase the possibility that you're going to, um, hold on, my microphone's dying here. All right, sorry if the audio got weird there for a minute. My batteries were dying on my microphone. All right, so whenever we're at this point in the calculation, we always want to look at the expression that we've just created to see if there's some way to simplify it so that we can avoid solving the quadratic. So ways that we can do that are if we have a perfect square, which means that the top is something times itself squared, and the bottom is something times itself. Well, in this case, this number and this number are different. So this is not a perfect square here. And by which I mean I can't just take the square root of this whole side and get rid of those exponents of 2, which we've done in a previous example, which helps simplify this whole thing, because then we don't have any x squared expressions. In this case, I can't do that, because this expression and this expression are different. If I had the same initial concentration of this and this, then my equilibrium would be, for example, 0.1 plus x and 0.1 plus x. If these are the same expression, then it's just that squared. And then there's an easy way to simplify that. So I can do that in this case. Another way that we can simplify this is to get rid of these x's on the bottom. If I can get rid of anywhere I have, um, 
anytime I have a value and I'm either adding x plus x or even up this on this one I can get try to get rid of this value where I'm subtracting x the there's a trick where if x is a really 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 small number then I can kind of ignore x and then I could just use these values and I could calculate uh, what uh, the equilibrium expression would be or what the equilibrium constant would be from that case so I can't really do that here though because um, if x is a small number then uh, I would ignore this x for example and I'd ignore this x for example and I'd ignore this x and how would I calculate that 0.682 squared divided by this divided by this that's just q and I already solved q so if I ignore this x and this x and this x and this problem then it's going to just reduce this expression to q and I already know that q and k are not equal so I can't use that trick that's not going to show me what these um, values are I know that I'm not at equilibrium so in that case since I have some amount of each and I can't use the small x approximation I can't use the perfect square approximation I just have to run through the algebra here and I'm gonna be left with an expression that has x squared and x and so I'm gonna the only way to solve that will be with a quadratic equation so the first thing to remember is to expand this remember when you have an expression like this we're gonna do a lot of algebra now this squared is just this expression times itself so let's expand that 682 minus 2x times 0.682 minus 2x All right, so when we have uh, ex this expression times this expression, and they're both in parentheses, um, then remember I have to apply that mathematical formula called FOIL. Remember, I multiply this times this first, and then I do the outer values, this times this, outer, first, outer, inner, last, and then the inner values, and then the last values. So it's been a while maybe for some of you since you've didn't done FOIL so let's drop down here and I'll remind you when you have a plus B times C minus D for example then the way that we have to multiply these together is we do first F outer O inner I and last L F O I L the FOIL method so what's that gonna give us well if I do first A times C then I would get A C and then if I do uh, outer A times minus D then I'd get negative A D and then I do inner B times positive C, so that would be plus B C. And then last would be B times negative D, that would be minus B D. So in order to apply FOIL um, to this kind of expression, then I have to remember this pattern, and I have to make sure that I multiply each of these values by each other. A is multiplied by C and D. B is multiplied by C and D. All right, so let's do that to our expression here. So I have 0.682 times 0.682 first. Zero point four six five one. All right, so first, outer 0.682 times negative two x. So this is going to be negative. 0.682 times 2 is negative 0.1364x. 
right? If I multiply this times negative 2x, then it's some number x. And now I do inner, so this value times this value. So it's the same thing, same numbers, 0.1364x. And now last, I do negative 2x times negative 2x, which is going to be positive 4x squared. All right, now let's do that to the bottom. 0 0.436 times 0 0.386. 0 0.436 times 0.386. This is my denominator here. 0 0.1683. I want to make sure I keep enough sig figs, so I'm going to keep four sig figs here. So I did first, now I'll do outer. This times x, so that's positive. 0.436x, and now I'll do inner, which is this times this, which is positive 0.386x, and then I'll do this times this last, which is plus x squared. And this is all equal to k, I forgot to set that up on the other side, and remember k is equal to 0.09. All right, so 0 0.0900. OK, so this is the expression that we're left with right now. So now what I have to do is get all of the numbers, the x's, the x squareds, and the numbers over onto one side. And on the other side, I'm going to leave 0. So when I, whenever I have an expression like this, and I have x squared in that expression, and I have x in that expression, some number with x, and I'm adding x to something with x squared, I have to solve that using a quadratic expression, a quadratic equation. So remember the quadratic looks like this. If I have a, an expression that's in the form of a x squared, so some number x squared, plus some number x, plus some number without x squared or x, just some number, and that's all equal to 0, then I can solve x. x equals this, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4hc divided by 2a. Maybe this looks familiar, maybe you haven't worked with it, or maybe it's just been a long time. So what we have to do is turn that, that thing that we just looked at, we have to turn it into this expression right here. I have x squared in my expression I just created. I have some number with x in there, and I have some numbers without x. I just have to get them all on the same side, and then when I subtract them from this side, what will be left on that side is 0. So let's do that. OK, so I have to, right now, let's see, this is an expression with x minus 1.364x minus 1.364x. So both of these expressions right here um, have, one, they're multiplied by 1x. That means I can combine this and this. I can combine those together. So let's do that. We're just going to start off slow. 0.4, come on, 4, 6, 5, 1. And then I have 1.364 negative minus 1.364. Now be careful with your negatives here because it's easy to add something when you should subtract it and vice versa and then your numbers get all screwed up. So the way I look at it is this expression right here is negative. I, I don't see this subtract 1.364. I see negative 1.64x. And what number is this? Negative 1.64x. So what am I doing? I'm adding together negative 1.364x plus negative 1.364x. So those should get more negative, right? I'm combining two negative numbers. All right, sorry if I'm going slow for some of you. You can just speed up the YouTube video and make me talk really fast at this point. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to combine these values, this one with x and this one with x. 0 0.436 plus 0 0.386. 
So you write down this number, 0 0.1683, that's just the first one, I didn't do anything to that, plus 0 0.822x. That's what I get when I add those two expressions with x together, plus x squared. Didn't do anything with that. All right, so I simplified this expression a little bit, not much, but a little bit. So the next step is going to be bringing this denominator over to this side. So remember we do that. If I, have it something, if I have it something in the denominator and I want to get rid of it, I just multiply by that. So I'm going to multiply this side by 0 0.1683 plus 0.822x plus x squared. And I'm going to multiply this side by that. 0 0.1683 plus 0.822x plus x squared. All right. And then I have that over that cancels from this side. And I just have to multiply, distribute this expression, or distribute this number into this expression. So what does that give me? And then on this side I have 0 0.09 times x squared, which is 0 0.0900x squared. All right. And then 0 0.09 times this number, times 0.822. So that is 0 0.073980. Three, nine, eight, x. Oops, almost lost the x there. All right, that's when I multiply this number times 0 0.9. Now I'll multiply this number times 0 0.9. So plus 0 0.1683 times 0 0.09. 0 0.01515. All right, that's still equal to this thing that I didn't move on this step. I didn't touch any of these numbers. Minus 2.728x plus 4x squared. All right, getting closer. So I can either move these values to this side of the equation by subtracting all of these values and making this side equal to 0. Or I can subtract these values and set this side equal to 0. So um, it doesn't really matter because you'll get to the same place both ways. You'll just have different uh, numbers for a, b, and c when you plug it into your quadratic, but you'll solve for the same number either way. So let's just pick one. Alright, so I subtract that from this side and I subtract the same thing from this side. So make sure I line these up. 0 minus 0 0.01515 plus, no, this is minus 2, minus 0 0.07398x minus. 0 0.0900x squared. Zero point. Okay, so then I, I got rid of these from this side. So now this side is equal to 0. 0 equals. 0 0.4651 minus 0 0.01515. So equals 0 0.4, not 4995. Now this one is 2.728 negative minus 
zero point zero seven three nine eight. So then this becomes a bigger negative number, two point eight zero one nine eight zero one nine eight x and now four minus point zero nine positive three point nine one x squared. All right, so what have we done? Now we have a equation that has some number with x and it's plus some number with x squared and another number that doesn't have an x or an x squared. We've combined all of those values together and on the other side it's equal to zero. So this is where we need to be when we solve the quadratic expression, the quadratic equation. So let's go to our quadratic equation and see how we plug this in. We have So ours is 3.91x squared minus 2.8019x, 0198x plus 0.44995. Point four four nine nine five equals zero. So we now have our equation looks just like this. So the reason that we would do that is because now when I try to solve this, I have x squared and x. How do I solve for x? That's really complicated when you have x squared and x. But if I have my equation looking like this, I can solve for x squared and x combined just by plugging it all those values into this equation then there's only one x or rather you'll see that we actually solve two x's at the end but we'll be able to pick which one is the right value for x alright so what that means is that a and b and c are numbers here is my number a here is my number for b and here is my number for c a b c so when I plug these into, and I know this is a because it's associated with x squared, right? And I know that this number is b because it's associated with x, and this number is c because it doesn't have an x squared or an x. Now I plug a, b, and c into this equation. x equals negative b. Negative, so there's another negative, but this number is already negative, so don't drop your negatives. 0, 1, 9, 8 b plus or minus we'll see how to use that in a minute if you've never seen that b squared negative 2.80198 squared minus 4 times ac 4 now a is 3.91 and C is 0.44995. And this whole thing is divided by 2A. Divided by 2 times A. A is 3.91. So you see we took the, our equation in this form. We solved for A, B, and C. And then we plugged A, B, and C into this equation so that now we have a bunch of numbers and functions and we can solve these numbers and see what x is equal to. So it's already set up with our variable on the left side we just have to plug and chug. So 2.80198 negative squared I'm going to start to reduce this so we get under here under the radical 7.85 one zero nine minus four times three point nine one times point four four nine nine five seven point zero three 
seven two one eight. All right, plus or minus. Let's bring this down. So, and then I'll solve this bottom one. Two times three point nine one seven point eight two. Whenever you're doing long algebra algebraic equations by hand and you're trying to solve all of these steps, look how many steps we've done so far. Lots and oh this is the, the new page. So remember that we've we've done lots of steps already, right? So whenever you're trying to solve these really long equations, these long expressions, make sure that you do it very systematically and you go one step at a time just like we have. Don't try to combine two steps. When I get to this point, what's the next step? Um, adding, combining this and combining this, that's a good next step. And then when I get to that point, what's the next step? Bringing the, denom the denominator over to this side. So that's just one step at a time. Then after I do that, what's the next step and so on. Just do one step at a time and write down each step and be very careful in your process because after you've been spending 20 minutes on one problem, if you get it wrong, you have a chance to go back and look at your algebra and see where it was that you made a mistake. So it's very important to keep good notes and to, to be systematic when you're working through your algebra. And um, notice how I line up my equal signs, right? E the equals are always right on top of each other. So it's, equal, it's easy for me to kind of see where I've come from and where I went to the next step and what happened in the next step and so on. All right, let's finish what's happening here under the radical. 7.85 minus, oh, drop my sig fig, 7.85109 minus 7.0375. Two, one, eight, and take the square root of that. So then I get negative. Uh, let's distribute these. I'm going to negative one times this negative makes this value positive, right? So I'm just going to stop carrying these negatives down. And I'm going to make this positive. Two point eight zero one nine eight plus or minus, and I just finished this radical. I took the square root, and that number is now zero point. Nine zero two one five, and this is all divided by seven point eight two. Okay, so now we're down to this plus or minus number. So it's just as easy as it looks. We do two point eight one zero nine eight plus point nine zero two one five, and then I do two point eight zero one nine eight minus point zero. 0.90215. So I, I'm going to have two answers. So let's see. x equals 2.80198 plus 0.90215 divided by 7.82. So x equals 0 0.4737. Or, now let's do the minus, 2.80198 minus 0 0.90215 divided by 7.82. Or 0 0.24295. Okay. So, how can x be this or this? How can it be two things? Well, the reason is because we're dealing with something that's squared. And when you're dealing with something that's squared, sometimes the, those numbers are negative, and you square two negatives, and they become a positive. Um, sometimes those numbers are positive numbers, and we put in a different value for x, and we can still get the same value for the expression. So the quadratic expression, when I have x, an x squared value and an x, I'm always going to get two values for x that both solve that equation. These are both the right answer. And so they're both the right answer as far as the quadratic equation is concerned, as far as algebra is concerned. But there's only one right answer as far as chemistry is concerned. And let's figure it out. It won't be too difficult to figure out which one of these is right. Let's go see why. 
we have 0.4737 or 0.24295. So when we go back here to our expression, what I have to do with x is plug x in to my equilibrium line right here, and then I can solve for equilibrium concentration. Remember, all of this work that we've done, the whole thing is just to figure out, I'm not quite at equilibrium yet, I have to move a little bit to get there. What's that little bit that I have to move? And all that that we just did was to solve for this x value here. So um, I have to plug in 0.682 minus 2 times x. This number cannot be 0. So minus 2x, the most of this that I can lose is, the, is what I start with. So I can never be left with a negative concentration. So I have two values for x. x equals 0 0.2425. Or zero point or what was the other one? Four seven three seven. Four seven three seven. So let's try this one. Point four seven three seven. So then I would have six eight two minus two times point four seven three seven point six eight two minus two times point four seven three seven this equals negative point two six five four a negative number so at equilibrium, I can't have a negative number. At equilibrium, I can't even have zero. This cannot be zero at equilibrium. There must be at least something here at equilibrium. Even if it's an incredibly small number, it must be bigger than zero. So a negative number is smaller than zero. So this isn't possible. It's, even though this number is a solution to the quadratic equation, this number is not a solution to a chemistry equation because it gives us negative concentration, which is nonsense. So it can't be this number. So it has to be this one. So let's plug that number in and see what we get. Two times point two four two nine five. All right, 0.682 minus 2 times 0.24295. This equals positive 0 0.1961. So this must be the right answer. Because after I subtract some amount, I have a positive amount left. And if I tried to plug this number in, I'd get a negative number, and that doesn't work. So finally, we're getting very close to solving this, but we're still not quite there yet. So I have, this will be molar, I have my equilibrium concentration of HOCl. This is it. Now let's plug it in over here. 0.436 plus x, and x is, we've solved for x now, so we can plug it in. 0.2425. Five. Point two four two nine five. So 0.436 plus 0.24295 equals 0 0.67895 molar. And this one is 0.386 plus 0 0.24295, 0 0.62895 molar. All right, so now I have my equilibrium concentrations for each of the species. And that's what this question is asking. So now let's go back and plug them in 
to our equilibrium expression right here. Let's plug these numbers into this expression and see if I solve k equals 0 0.09. I should get the same equilibrium constant if I've solved for the right equilibrium concentrations. So let's do that, just to double check. All right, HSCL is 0 0.1961 molar squared. H2O, I remember these aren't, there's not actually units here, right? I just went over that. H2O is 0.67895 and dichlorooxide 0.62895. So 0.1961 squared divided by 0.67895 divided by 0.62895 equals 0 0.09 zero five three six four so you can see the quadratic ex oops the quadratic equation there even though it's really long and really hard to do it's really powerful it gave us the x value that's when we plugged that value in and we solved for the concentrations for the equilibrium concentrations we get exactly zero point zero nine zero zero back for our equilibrium expression, our equilibrium constant. So you may have noticed that we have now been working on this problem for almost 50 minutes. Um, in a exam setting, you can expect that there will be at least one question that's going to require you to do a quadratic equation. Um, so most of the problems in the test, you'll be able to use a shortcut and you'll be able to find a perfect square, or you'll be able to use the x is small approximation. Um, and we'll go over that one here in just a minute. But sometimes you won't. You'll have to solve the entire quadratic. And um, there's enough time for you to do that on a test, and you're only going to have to do it generally once. Maybe there's one or two in there that require a quadratic equation. Um, and having said that, we just solved the quadratic by hand. Um, well, with a calculator, but on paper, right, where we're going step by step and putting in all the steps, and then we plug A, B, and C in, and we go through and we solve for X and all of that, right? It's totally okay with me if you use a quadratic calculator. So here's one that I just pulled up from, uh, from Google. I just put in quadratic calculator. So we solved this page here with A, B, and C. All right, we solved for A, B, and C, and then we plugged it into the quadratic, and we came down here, and we got x. But if we know what A, B, and C are, then it's totally OK with me to save time, and you know how to do algebra. You don't have to go through all of this stuff if you don't want to. And plug in your value for A, 3.91, and plug in your value for B, negative 2.80198 and plug in your value for C, 0.44995. Make sure that you carry your negatives through. If B is negative, it's got to be negative here. And what we get, x equals 0.4737 or 0.24295, 2.4295, right? So if you can get A, B, and C, then maybe your calculator is even fancy enough to have the quadratic in there. Just plug A, B, and C into your calculator or into a website like this. And look, it even shows you all the math that it went through here. This is all the same math that we just did to get these values. Save yourself from some time. All right, so now let's go over a problem where we can use the x is small approximation.